How's it going, you guys? AZPlayout21 back here with another video in WMMA5. However, today we are going to be starting something new. I've kind of been wanting to do this for a while now um, because of how convoluted and how much of the UFC save that people have um, not seen and things like that and how confusing it can kind of be sometimes me trying to explain things I think it'd be a, a really good idea to continue that series of course because I know some of you guys have been following it and really want to know what's going on with it but something that I'm really gonna try to get started here is another save not just because it's something that I've wanted to do for a while but also because it'll be a lot easier for other people to follow since this will be in episode one instead of you know just me starting at episode 13 like I did recently and just kinda trying to get people back on track with it so hopefully this will be something that more people can be interested in you know someone something that people can follow from episode one onward uh, I know a lot not a lot of people are watching WMA5 content but here we go this is my attempt at a local to global save on YouTube uh, AZ Plow 21. If you guys do not know me, I have been playing WMMA5 for as long as I can remember. Like the day it, it came out, I bought this game and I started playing it because I love WMMA3. I've been playing the game since then. I've been playing a lot of Grey Dog software games because I really like the TEW games as well. So I'm very well versed and I'm very experienced when it comes to these games. And you're going to come to find out that I'm actually pretty good at this at this game. And I'm really good at trying to uh, explain the inner workings of this game and the things that go on with it. So here we are at the company selection screen. And I've already got my company set up to go. I uh, created this company called Gladiator Fighting Global. As you can see, they're a completely unknown company. It just opened up. Brand new promotion ran by AZ Plow 21 aiming for MMA dominance. Absolutely nobody on the roster and uh, only $10,000 to our name. So absolutely unknown company, but we're a global company and that's exactly what we're going for. We're going to be gunning for the UFC, trying to take over their spot as the number one overall company. So we're going to go over to GFG, and we're going to tour the company right now. As you can see, absolutely zero fighters, uh, actually $50,000 available. So think of it as a, a kind of running your own promotion kind of deal. I put uh, Joe Rogan as the CEO, and he clearly has a lot more money, but I kind of just did that for uh, uh, cosmetic purposes. I really like Joe Rogan, like listening to his podcast. But uh, nonetheless, here we are with GFG, Gladiator Fighting Global. And uh, this is episode one because it's a lot to go through because, well, <laughs> we're starting from 100% scratch with this uh, fight promotion. As you can see there, Joe Rogan will be my avatar. It really has nothing to do with the game. I can't make him fight or anything like that. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, other things that are going on. And a 100% brand new game save. You can see there, Daniel Cormier, top pound for pound fighter. This uh, uh, mod is... Uh, uh, current to only December of 2018, so that kind of sucks in that regard just because there isn't a lot of uh, modding community in this game. So this is as of uh, December 2018, but I did update the champions um, as of yesterday, as of this morning, in fact. The UFC Shenzhen show just happened, and uh, Weili Zhang just won the UFC Strawweight Women's Championship. So I updated it for that. And uh, right here, as you can see, new GFG owner is uh, Joe Rogan. So he's going to be taking over, and uh, we're going to take over the reins for this fight promotion. Motion. And the first thing I want to do is I want to sign some fighters, first of all, because you don't want to schedule your, your, your fights first, because if you do that, you run the risk of not having anything to put on the show. You don't want to say we have... Um, we have a fight card scheduled if you don't have any fighters because um, these fighters, they need a lot of time to actually like get ready for their fights. And since I'm not, you know, as big of an owner like the UFC would be, I'm not Dana White, I can't necessarily convince these fighters to, you know, exactly like force themselves to fight for me. They're not going to be under exclusive contracts. A lot of the fighters that I'm going to have are also going to be fighting for other promotions. So I need to keep that in mind as well. And um, I'm not really going to be able to give out exclusive contracts also. it's They're all going to be just, you know, people that are looking for fights and looking for money as soon as possible. So they're all going to be standard contracts. And they're all going to be just, you know, kind of crappy fighters for the time being. But that's the name of the game. We're trying to work our way up. Trying to make sure that we improve every single event. Getting a little bit more popular. Uh, as we advance towards uh, global domination. 
So a really different strategy than I would do with the UFC where I can afford to lose money to make money. I really need to like watch out as far as budget wise. I can't just go signing, you know, the best guys right away because I only have fifty thousand dollars to work with from the get go. So I can only really be signing guys that at the most want like a thousand per fight for show. And that's 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 only if they show. If they win, they get another thousand. So think about it. You're paying a guy two thousand dollars if they win their fight. You want at least ten fights on a fight card for it to be good. So that's a guaranteed like uh, two uh, twenty thousand dollars you're giving out right there. And that's not including like the venue, the advertising, things like that. So it, it costs a lot of money to run a fight promotion. I'd imagine, especially one that you want to improve. So this is going to be very interesting. We might lose money quickly. But uh, I'm, uh, I'm here for the challenge. So let's go ahead and go to our office. As you can see here, no show scheduled, no broadcasting deals in place. Um, I don't think we'd really be able to get one right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that approachable yes, unless we can just sign up for like YouTube or something right now. And in fact, there's absolutely no one who wants to sign us. So yeah, no one would want would sign us right now. So for the time being, we're not going to be on TV. So it really wouldn't do us any good to get any you know big stars because they're not even going to be able to uh, be televised. So no one's really going to be able to see it. So we're going to be going mainly for guys that you know maybe want like three hundred to five hundred dollars a fight. So that's within our range. So um, the next thing we're going to do, we, I say take a look at our roster, but we don't have any. Uh, we're not going to tour the company. Can't make a, a card right now. Roster, rankings, belts, weight classes, rules and settings, event history, hype, tags, child organization, media, demographics, absences, contract overview, popularity, stability, credibility. A lot of these tabs in the UFC, I don't really have to use all that much just because I know that I'm popular enough where I don't have to worry about things like the stability, the credibility, um, you know, who's gone and things like that. But when it comes to this, I really actually do need to take a look at that because I need to know where everyone is, who's coming back and things like that, like as soon as possible, because I don't I don't just have like 500 people on roster that I can just immediately say, OK, go ahead and fight like I need to make sure that I'm keeping tabs on everything. So this is going to be a very interesting save, and I'm glad that you guys are here for it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and see who we can sign up. Can't get it on a broadcast deal right now. Drug testing uh, in-house, that's 100% fine. That's also another thing we have to look out for. We have to make sure everyone gets drug tested. That costs a lot of money. Uh, scouting, we're not going to take a look at right now. I'm not necessarily even needing to scout. Hall of Fame, shortlist, blacklist, and cut from roster. So... First thing we are going to do is go to the fighter screen. All right. Let's go active fighter, uh, active fighter, employment available for hire. All right. So there's obviously going to be a lot of people that I can sign. And uh, I really only want to... Uh, uh, keep it with um, the men for right now just because I want to kind of just ease into it a little bit the women fighters are very hard to come by and they're probably going to cost a little bit more so it kind of wouldn't make sense for me right now to try to go into that so I'm going to want to um, take a look more at the at the men for right now in a division that has a lot of fighters something like the welterweight or lightweight division so let's go ahead and take a look at the welterweights that are available right now and it doesn't seem like there's necessarily a lot and this these are giving me all the welterweights men and women so go ahead and set that to male and these are all the people that would be available to fight for me is that correct I'm not a hundred percent sure but as you can see like see like this guy right here 8 11 and 1 terrible record but he's $800 per fight that's within my range so if I see anything around 500 or lower that's a, that's basically immediate signing just because they're cheap. So I'm just going to go down and take a look and see if there's anyone that's ridiculously cheap. Everyone's around 900 per fight right now. So nothing 800. It looks like 800 might have to be the way that I go here. Not seeing anybody that's not seeing anyone that's uh, any cheaper really and you wouldn't imagine that they would be that cheap as literally the, the cheapest people I can get are 800 and there's no way that I can search uh, via uh, like there's no way that I can search via like how expensive they are um, you can kind of gauge that just by how popular they are but let's go ahead and take a look at maybe 
Uh, let's take a look at like the lightweight division, see if there's anyone cheaper there. All right, still just 900. Oh, <laughs> Charles Bennett, he's funny. Um, he recently just lost, actually, like really recently. But he's a he's a funny dude. Um, not funny. He's kind of a shitty dude in real life, but he's just uh, he's wild. There's a video of there of a uh, of him up there somewhere of him. Um, he's getting put in a Kimura, but he does not feel phased at all, and he lifts his opponent and drops him on his head. It's actually pretty funny. But uh, same thing with this weight class. You know, everyone's kind of just like 900 to a thousand per fight. No one's really. Oh, 110 per fight. Not exactly sure why he's that cheap. But I'll go ahead and sign up this guy immediately. Only 110 per fight. Not sure at all why he would be that expensive. But I'll go ahead and sign him up. 150 per fight. Standard fighter. Would he want an exclusive fighter contract? Let's see. Uh, not worth. Not big enough. Okay. All right. Standard fighter. Three fights. You can all. Oh, you can only offer guaranteed fights on an exclusive deal. See, that's another thing I need to get used to. Can't offer exclusive or you can offer exclusive contracts somewhere down the line, but you can't actually offer guaranteed fights. So Michael McBride who's apparently been in the UFC before, 110 per fight. That might just be a glitch, but I'm here for that. See, this guy, too, 120 per fight, 13-1. and one. Not a bad record, but seemingly unknown, and that's probably why he's so cheap. But uh, that might just be an oversight because of the... Uh, because of the mod, they probably didn't edit his uh, his popularity. But I'll go, I'll go ahead and give him 150 per fight, too. This is kind of criminal, what I'm giving them, nonetheless. Um, kind of working with what we have here because we can't really be handing out thousands and thousands of dollars. So we have two fighters. Let's go ahead and uh, so that's basically our first fight that we have there. Let's go and take a look at the featherweight division. We'll have to eventually come back to those $800 per fight people too. All right, but let's see if we can find anybody that's uh, pretty cheap here. And I'm just looking for someone lower than mm, around 600 Anything above that we'll have to come back to. I think I just saw Luis Paint. No, it's Mike Santiago. 900. Not looking. Tyler Diamond. Not looking. Not looking super great. So I'm just kind of looking for those mistakes where they are uh, 130 per fight. Bantamweight division. All right. Looking for those uh, cheap fighters. <laughs> And uh, another thing we're also going to have to look after is, uh, like I do in the UFC save, I have to look out for the uh, beginning of the month because those are when the regen fighters are going to come in. And those guys are usually pretty cheap if they're shitty. So need to take a look at those when they come out as well. Uh, nothing doing here. Look at the flyweight division, 900, 800, 800. And I don't think I would... See, this guy's ranked in the... but. Mid-level regional, it wouldn't really be worth it necessarily. Oh, there we go. Another guy. That's a 120. Roberto Sanchez. All right. So, uh, go ahead and give you that 120. There you are, Roberto. Hopefully, I can find someone else in your division. I would need to. I absolutely actually need to find someone else in his division just because he needs someone he can actually fight. So let's see if there's anyone that's 800. This guy 0 and 4, and this guy's 4 and 9, and 900. So let's uh, let's stay here in the flyweight division, and uh, let's see if uh, any of these guys that come up are any good. Tootsie, that's the thing here. 2800 can't afford that, so let's lower that down to mid-level regional and see if there's any guys that. Would take 800. No, still no. Justin Tank Scoggins, he wants too much. Mm -hmm -hmm. Low level regional. Okay, so uh, Adam Antolin, 900, 800, 800, 900, 900, 1000, nope, 900, 900. A thousand nine hundred nine hundred. 
and primarily someone who's a little young, not like overly young. See, like I'll take this guy, Willie Whoopass Gates. Oh, he's been in the UFC before, low level regional. He would be main eventing our biggest shows just because he's like a guy who's been in the UFC before. So this is the guy we're going to sign for that flyweight fight. He's not signed up to anybody, not under contract with anybody. And so we'll go ahead and I'll leave it at that. 900 should be enough. And it, in fact, is. All right. So Willie Whoopass Gates should be in there for our flyweight division. All right. So let's go ahead and take another look. Let's take a look at the, some of these heavyweights, actually. See if there's anyone that's... Uh, that's cheap enough for me to sign. Maybe get a couple more of these uh, $120 guys. And uh, all of these guys that I'm looking at right now are the only... It's not everyone that's in the game. It's just because I can only sign people who are active in the United States. And so with that comes uh, a heavy price because, you know, I'm not able to sign any Brazilians uh, until I get a little bit more well-known any Brazilians or Canadians for that nature. So these guys are all like a thousand, eight hundred. It's not very good though. Not exactly seeing anyone that I would want necessarily either. Oh, there we go. 160, Kenny Spotwood. Got you. Let's go ahead and uh, get you on here as well. And again, I, I realize these guys are not known at all. These guys aren't necessarily who I would be going after, but I'm trying to just save money because it's a brand new promotion. I can't go out there. Like, if you were to absolutely ask me, like, sign Brett Rogers, like, he's a well-known guy, high-level regional. He'd be main eventing. For sure, Cody East, he's been in the UFC before. I just don't have the money right now to be able to do that, so I'm trying to save money, and that's exactly what we're doing. Mohamed Usman, I think that's his, uh, that's uh, Kamar Usman's brother. See if there's any more guys like Rico Suave, <laughs> Rico Suave Rodriguez. Hmm. Let's see, there's another guy who's really cheap. Number four super heavyweight in the world, apparently. Steve Maury, it's a nice guy to have. Just trying to see if I can find anybody else who's cheap, and I can't. But I need to sign at least one more heavyweight. So let's see. Looking for anyone who's like 800. Mm. 900. So let's go ahead and uh, minimum name value, low level regional. Anyone who's 800. Dingo Brown, not about to sign you. I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to, uh, you know, records and things like that. I, I like guys who have better record. So yeah, this guy, Zach Rosal, I think he's going to be the heavyweight that we that we sign. He'll be the one who goes up against Kenny Spotwood. He's not happy with the overall package. All right. So let's give your big pay-per-view bonus because we're not going to be on pay-per-view for a while. <laughs> he actually agrees to that. What an idiot. All right, cool. So we have our heavyweight fights. All right. So let's take a look at the light heavyweight, see if there's anything going there. All right, get everything here good, yep. All right, so again, name of the game is just trying to save money. Cheap guys, 800, 800, oh, 220. This guy's been in the UFC as well, James Boknovic. Let's get him right in there. I'll give him 250 just to sweeten it. All right, there we are. Anyone else that's cheap? No. 900. All right, we need to sign someone else, and there's not a lot going on here in the light heavyweight division. So we need to sign one more guy. All right. Darren Costa. Jeremy Kimball. I like him. He's been in the UFC for a while. Josh Sanbury. Mm, Matt Van Buren. Anyone else who's like 900 or so? Uh, no. Terry Davini. Todd Monahan. No. All right. So it's, I think we're going to go 800. No. No. 
Nope. Oh, there's another guy. It's 900. Not you either. Um, this guy's been on World Series of Fighting. He has a lot of other contracts, though. So let's go ahead and go after uh, Jeremy Kimball. Sign him to a uh, three-fight three, three fight deal as well. Sign him up for Gladiator Fighting Global. Alright, so I want to have at least two fighters in each division for now, just so I know we have one fight in each division. So let's go to the middleweight division, see what we can find there. Anybody cheap at first? 900... Oh, we're going to be around 900. Do, do, do. Looking for value in the market. Nope. All right. So let's go ahead and go back. Hmm. So we got our two heavyweights, our two light heavyweights. So let's go ahead and stay here at the middleweight division and sign at least two guys. Let's see if there's anyone. And I want to find someone with a little bit of name value. So let's see if there's, uh, first of all, anyone high-level regional that's cheap. Highly doubt it. Melvin Gillard. Like, I'd, I'd like to have him. Or I'd like to have, like, anyone who really has, like, some high, you know, name value. But they're going to be too expensive at this point for me to justify signing them. 2000 Like, yeah, it's a little bit too much for me right now. So it's going to have to be one of these low-level regional guys, which is okay, you know. Um, just build up our brand, you know, build up our, our fight our fight game, you know, so that way people know who we are. See, like this guy, 900, 30 years old, 11 and 3. I like that record, so. But he's already got a contract with LFA, which I'm not super a fan of, just because it makes complications. So this guy, Davin Clark, 900 per fight. Uh, eh, I'll sign this guy, 25 years old, 3 and 1, very young into his career. I'll go ahead and sign him. And I think I'm going to sign four guys from this division, as a matter of fact, just so I have uh, two fights that I know is good to go. Don't like his record. I'll sign this guy. He's in Arizona. I'm from Arizona. That's all good. Joe Gigliotti. All right. Anyone else? Uh, you're 40 years old. You're too much. 800. I'll go ahead and sign this guy as well. He's not happy with the package. Pay-per-view bonus will up that because we're not going to be on pay-per-view for a while. All right. He likes that. And one more guy at around 800 or 900. Let's see here. 900. Mm, anyone else that's better? 900. This guy's from Australia. Don't know why I can really sign him. He must be based in USA. Let's see. And that is, seems to be it. So let's go ahead and sign this guy right here. Alright, so Mike Bernhard is in the van as well. And so now let's go to the welterweight division and see who we can sign. I think I'm going to want to sign six guys in the welterweight division just because I w it's a very deep division. Like, as you can see, like, there's a lot of guys free agent-wise that I can sign. And there's got to be at least five or six guys who are $800. So I'm only going to look for the $800 guys at first, and I'm going to sign them if they have a decent enough record. So let's go ahead and see here. No one at 800. 7 and 8, that's not good enough for me. Uh, everyone's around 900. No one $800 who has an okay record. 13 and 19 is not a good record. 900. Ooh, Kean Codwell Caldwell. Mm, I'll sign him, despite him being 900. All right. So that's 1. 900, no... Anybody? 800. Yep, this guy. $800 per fight. 5 and 2. Let's get him in there as well. He's not happy with the package. Let's give you that pay-per-view bonus. And again, if you guys have any questions or anything about the game or anything that I'm doing, don't hesitate to ask me down in the comments. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Snapchat at azplow21. It's all good. I'm more than happy to answer your questions or anything of that nature. 
All right, anyone else? 800, 800, there we are. Four and five, not a great record. All right, so now we gotta look for those 900s. All right, six and three. All right, so this will be our third guy we sign in the welterweight division. All right, 900 and eight and four, that's perfectly fine with me. He's been in the UFC before, so we have our fourth fighter in the welterweight division. Uh, yeah, UFC veteran as well. This will be our fifth guy. We might actually be able to sign eight guys in the welterweight division. Uh, not a good record. You have an okay record, Bellator veteran. All right, so this will be six. Uh, if we can get ten guys from this division at $900 a piece, you're a little too old for me. All right, nine and six, nah, not the best. Nope, not you. Seven and five, not terrible. I'll go ahead and sign him up. This will be number seven. Nine hundred thirteen eleven two old. Mm, I already signed him. Nineteen fifteen and one, not the best, and he's already got a contract. All right. Let's see, one more, one or two more nine hundred dollar guys. Like this guy, 1711, not super terrible. All right, two or three more. Yep, I'll take this guy as well, Greg Soto. And of course, it doesn't hurt to have, you know, some extra guys on your roster just because you never know if anyone's going to call out or anything like that. So, you know, it doesn't hurt. All right, got him. Nine and five, I'll go ahead and get this guy as well. Derek Krantz. This guy's actually in the UFC now. Um, yeah, get this guy as well. They're 14 and 11. So my welterweight division is going to be stacked. The rest I'm going to have to build up over time. Let's see. Anyone else 900? You're a little too old. You don't have a great record. This guy I'll go ahead and sign from Bellator, or former Bellator fighter, I should say. Let's see, anyone else, 900, you, this this guy's a nice record, and ooh, he's kind of, he's got another contract, but, you know, with as good of a record as he has, he'd be worth, you know, kind of fighting for. 10 and 7, this guy is, 31 years old, $900, though, not going to beat that price. All right, and maybe, maybe a couple more, Bobby Nash, this guy's actually in the UFC pretty recently. He's lost to both of the Chinese fighters. Bobby Nash, get him in there. Always nice to have some former UFC fighters in here. And that seems to be it. So not exactly sure how many because I kind of lost count, but a big amount of welterweights that I signed up there for $900 a piece. And so now we'll move on to the lightweights. Sign two more Let's see, looking for those 800s. 800s at first. Anyone else that we find is uh, basically a bonus. 800, 9, and 5. I am all about it. Josh Tyler. He wants that pay-per-view bonus as well. Good for him. All right, anyone at 800? 100, I already signed that guy up. Okay, 800, anybody? Anybody? All right, so now 900, I, I can sign about three more guys. 900, nope, not you. 900, five and four, no thank you. 900, no. Uh, ladies love Nate Jolly, that's a funny name, and just because of that, I'll go ahead and sign him up. Nate Jolly, get in here, so just... uh. Starting the beginning of everything here, really, and just uh, trying to sign people to fight for my promotion. 14 and 9, but you're a little too old for my liking. Mike Joy will go ahead and sign him up. All right. Sign about two more guys here at the 900 range. Another guy from Arizona. Okay. Two or three more fighters in this division. Julian Lane, that guy, I think that's the Let Me Bang Bro, I'm pretty sure, that's that's pretty funny. 
Uh, yeah, 11 and 7, not a terrible record. Sign you up as well. If you have a winning record, essentially, ooh, this guy, 6 and 1, Johnny Boy Nunez, young Latin star to build around. All right, so let's see, 8 and 9, no thank you. Basically, anyone at 900 that I like really is who I'm going to be signing. I don't need to put a, a limit on it because it's not like I'm paying them automatically. It's when they do fight. So I don't, don't necessarily need to worry about about that right now. It's when they actually are fighting. Um, veteran, he's on a losing streak. No, thank you. Not to that guy. 900, 9 and 8. No, thank you. 13, 13. No, sir. All right, it's 10 and 3, Kane Carrizoza, like that. Go ahead and get him in there. All right, 6 and 5, nah, not the best. And that's going to be it for right now for that division. Let's go ahead and move on to the featherweight division. See who we can find here for the cheap. And I see Andre Harris, somebody has too many contracts. 900. Uh, yeah, anyone 800 or 900, I'm just going to go ahead and sign at this point. You know, like I said, it's um, it's more about when when you have these guys and you can actually make the fight cards that you want to worry about. You know, like you're going to have to pay them and whatnot. Think about the venues and everything like that. But uh, for right now, I can just worry about signing these guys up and making sure that I have the option of booking them. All right, so there's that. 800, 8 and 3, like that. Go ahead and sign him up. He wants that pay-per-view bonus as well. So a lot of this is just me signing guys up, so that way I can actually, you know, book the fights. So I'm going to just uh, go through offering these guys contracts and probably end the episode there. Maybe start another one in a little bit. 900, not a fan of your record. 900, not a fan of your record as well. 900, 4 and 4, 800, 8 and 4. Go ahead and get you in here. He wants a pay per view bonus as well. Frank Buenafuente. Right. Again, looking for those guys with eight, that are asking for around 800 or 900 per fight. Looking to save as much money as possible. Gladiator Fighting Global. Going to be starting up probably. In two months or so in game time, uh, it's going to take a while for these guys to actually like sign on the dotted line and then for me to get everything set up. It'll take a little bit, e a little bit more time even. All right, 12 and 12, no thanks. 6 and 2, I'll go ahead and sign you up as well. All right, let's see. Who else? Mike Santiago, like that. He was in the Ultimate Fighter, I believe. Uh, not you. You know, I can, uh, and I like, I can be a little bit selective. I can't be a little over selective just because I need fighters, obviously, um, because these fighters that I'm signing, you know, and oh, do I really want to splurge on Tyler Diamond? And he's a really good prospect, and I think I'm going to, just because he's a, a young guy can build up. So yeah, fourteen hundred a fight for him. It'll be okay. So go to the bantamweight division, see who's cheap and over there. Got a couple more divisions here. Not going to be doing the women's divisions just yet. Uh, well, can't be selective here. There's not that many options. So I'll go ahead and sign this guy up. Ooh, Chris Beal. I, I was actually kind of a fan of his when he was in the UFC for a while. Obviously. Three fight losing streak fell on a little bit of hard times. This guy, Chris El Wapo Gutierrez. All right. He's in there as well. And the thing is, I might have to counter offer some of these guys because they're they're gonna get they're gonna get offers from other fight promotions. And the first couple days of this save is gonna be brutal having to sim through just because of how much stuff is going to be going on as far as like offering contracts and things of that nature. Some of these guys I might not even be able to uh, to get simply because they're going to be offered so many different contracts from different companies. All right, looking for the cheapest guys. Go ahead and sign you up as well. Four and three, but 
this point, not trying to be overly picky. 9-6, and six, that's not a terrible record. All right, these are all guys that I know would sign with me. Otherwise, they would not be on the screen. Palmdale, California. Seth Dyken, get in there. All right, 800, 900. That seems to be it for the Bantamweight division. So on to the flyweights we go. And then after that, we will close off shop. So Adam Anselin, you can get in here. Former ranked flyweight in the UFC. This guy. Let's get him in there. Alvin Kakadak. Funny name. It is what it is. You're too old. And, uh, uh, let's see here. 0 and 4, not signing you. Jamie Alvarez, nice, nice record. 31 years of age. Surprised he's actually this cheap, but I'm not going to complain either way. Mm. Now, Jose Shorty Torres, he was cut from the UFC. I'd be kind of a fool not to want to sign him. He's not overly expensive for how good he is and for how, not how marketable he is, but just like he's a really good, you know, fighter, obviously. So I'm going to sign him up, go go against my, my wishes as per usual. Scoggins is still a little bit too expensive for me. Uh, this guy, I need to get more people in this division, so... Seven and six isn't the end of the world, record-wise. I think I already signed this guy. Eight and two, that's a steal right there. He might be injured, though. Medical suspension, yep. All right, let's see. Anyone else? Yep, Shane Howell. Sign you up as well. I think by the end of this, I'm probably going to have like 30 or 40 guys on roster, which is kind of a lot. That's good for around two fight cards, so... We'll have to figure out what we're doing after that. Tyson Nam, mid-level regional, but he's the way too expensive. All right, Willie Gates. I think I already signed him up. Yep. All right, so that seems to be it. Um, maybe go to the heavyweight, see if I can find anyone else over there. I think I only signed two at a heavyweight and two at light heavyweight. All right, so let's see. Anyone else? Uh, No. See, that's the thing. Heavyweights are really expensive. Cody Griffin, not too expensive. Let's go ahead and get this guy. Uh, ooh, 11, 6, and 1. Take you. Alrighty. 800, no thank you. Nope. 900, terrible record. 900, not the worst record. And you're a heavyweight, so we need, we need guys like you. 45, 43, 36. I'll go ahead and sign you. He's he's fought Bobby Lashley before. That's pretty funny. All right. 9 and 2. Go ahead and sign this guy up. Only 30 years of age. And again, the name of the game is trying to save money by not signing the guys that are like well known. Um just trying to save some money signing the guys that are around 900 or so and then building building them up, building up the promotion just uh you know really getting our name out there because you want to kind of just have as many cards as possible just so your name gets out there your promotion is in front of everyone you get a little bit of a, a TV deal so that way you can be exposed to more more uh, eyes and then from there it's just trying to have the best fights possible I think Zach Rosal has already been signed and that's gonna do it for the heavyweight division sign up some more light heavyweights and then we'll really be done 900, anybody? Oh, I think that's right because there wasn't much going on in this division. Corey Hendricks would be nice to have, but don't think I'll be able to do it. Let's see, 4-4, four and four, no thank you. Mm, 900, too many contracts. James Bachnovic. Mm, I'll go ahead and sign Stansbury as well. He's practically a, a replacement at this point. Oh, this guy's not that terrible either. Lolohea Mahe, Brino Mahe's brother. Convicted felon, red. That's <laughs> funny. Uh, Matt Van Buren, I'll sign him up too. Let's see, anyone else? 900. 900. Um, yeah, go ahead and sign this guy too. Terry Davini. I think uh, that's going to do it. All right. 
So go ahead and go back to the main screen. Free agent rankings. Don't think we'll actually be able to sign this guy. Yep. Modern era settings. Hiring fighters who are based in America. Yeah, so until we get a little bit more popular, we're not going to be able to sign a lot of these guys. Like, I could sign Jared Brooks if I wanted to, and I'm uh, thinking about it. Just, he's a great fighter, but he's not that popular, really. So what I might do is I might splurge on just one guy, just one fighter, who I know is super popular. Name value in America. Let's go to low level national and see if there's anyone that I want to splurge on. I think it's taking a while for it to to think, and that's because it couldn't find anybody. So let's go to high level regional now. See if there's anyone. All right, so here at high level regional, two and four, not a great record. Brim, Brett Rogers, like I mentioned earlier on. And these guys are all expensive. That's the thing. Steven Seiler, Rico Rodriguez, Melvin Gallard. None of these guys are coming off a win. KJ Noons, Joe Riggs, Houston Alexander. Gerald Harris would be pretty cool. 3,300 though, Efrain Escudero, none of these guys seem to be 100% worth it really. Yeah, so I'm not going to splurge on anyone just right now. So let's go ahead and get out of there. And let's take a look at the decisions. This is going to tell us how many people we've we've got coming in. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we got around 68, 69 fighters. That's a nice amount of uh, fighters to have on our staff. That's If we were to have actually 60 fighters, divided by two that's around 30 fights that's good enough for around three cards so i mean realistically we can have our first card in around a month and a half two months or so and just consistently have cards coming in if we can sign more fighters and uh that's that's what i'm going to try to do and uh that's what we're going to find out see if it happens in the next episode so episode number one in the books in this local to global save i'm glad you guys were able to join me for it Gladiator Fighting, Gladiator Fighting Global is underway, and uh, I'll have uh, the second episode up in just a few hours, getting things set for our first fight card and signing our first fighters. We'll be right back. Have a good one, guys. This has been AC Plow Twenty One.